welcome to the panel. I am Love Dell, and this season we are talking about what it means to be black in Britain. In this episode, I am joined by Simone, Yesterday, and Carla, and we're going to be talking about what it means for us to be black women in Britain. We're going to be looking at some negative stereotypes and disadvantages we face and how we can overcome it. Let's start from you, Simone, if you yeah. want to just introduce yourself, what you do, and maybe talk a little bit about your experience as a black woman. I'm Simone. I am, a, I would call myself a freelance session musician, I guess is the best way I could put it. I do not know if that is the best description, but that's how I'm going to describe it. Um, being black in Britain, there's a lot of things that are coming up now that I feel have kind of been, you know, as a black person sort of pushed down and not discussed within our lives. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad it's it's coming to the surface, but it's it's interesting being black in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, tell me about yourself. Okay. And what, for you, tell me a bit about your experience. Cool, so currently I am a freelance model and photographer. Um, my experience of being black in Britain is like kind of a mystery. Mm -hmm. So like I didn't realize I was like the only black girl in my primary school so I didn't like mm. see it as an issue like we, I got along with everyone quite well mm. then I went to a majority black girl school so I got even, I had a really nice experience there mm. it's only when I got to like uni where I really clocked that wow I'm a black woman mm. in Britain mm. interesting so yeah we could talk more about it sure later and Carla <laughs> I'm a social prescriber creative and all around um, just someone that loves life. Mm -hmm. But I think my experience as a black woman, it's equally the same as everyone here. But I think it's been a journey and I'm coming to it. I'm coming into that now. Um, especially like this year has really allowed me to appreciate what it is to be black and to kind of celebrate the difference mm -hmm. to what it is to be black and to be away from home, but living somewhere that I still is my home as well, equally. Yeah, but we can talk about it more. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, let's kick this off. Let me ask you, what would you say is a negative stereotype about black women that has maybe affected you or impacted you? That we're angry. Yeah. <laughs> That's the yeah. first yeah. thing that comes to my mind, the angry black women, right? Yeah. yeah. How has that played out for you? I would say I haven't actually, like, had that put against me mm. or like that I've noticed like in my actual like social life I'm more of like a peacemaker mm. so I'm always like okay guys like let's not fight peace and love peace and love <laughs> but it's just like I didn't know that was a stereotype and like now that I see it it's just like that's pushed forward like if we're being assertive like mm. exactly. whereas if it was like a wild white male it would be he's being like a boss, like he's doing the job, he's getting stuff done. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, I haven't personally experienced like that stereotype used against me, mm -hmm. but yeah. I'd probably say the same. I mean, the only like, I would probably say I am more of a peacemaker mm -hmm. and more of a, you know, happy-go-lucky character. Mm -hmm. But I have been told in the past that, you know, people thought that I was gonna beat them up because I didn't smile. And, mm -hmm. you know, they, they took that as me being like maybe a not nice person, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it was just a case of like, I don't know, I was shy. I just wasn't smiling mm -hmm. because I didn't know them like properly at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely they're like, I do feel like if you are more, si if you go into a situation being more serious from the get go, mm -hmm. then like the way people can perceive you definitely because of like you know off cuff comments that people might say about mm -hmm. you know the angry black woman mm -hmm. as a joke jokes mm -hmm. become reality mm -hmm. yeah. For, yeah for people and you know i think that um it's something i'm definitely aware of if i do look not as friendly as you know somebody who maybe isn't black in the same situation mm -hmm. yeah i think for me it's just how you're perceived so obviously we're sitting down, but I'm tall, you know, mm. I'm dark skin yeah. and I'm a woman. And what that looks like when you walk in the room is like people automatically just assume by just looking at you that you're a certain way. Mm -hmm. And everyone said to me, like, I've had that thing or sometimes I've had that resting face. Yeah. But then when you speak to me, it's like, oh, you're really nice. Or yeah. having to 
overcompensate yeah even without you don't have to do something to trigger anger or have mm. even been angry for you to have this this connotation that if you say this or you feel people walk on eggshells or Around not you. Yeah, yeah because they think that and even for myself it's not been mm. a thing where someone said to me oh you're angry or they've automatically come out and said that but it's just having to realize that even if it is a joke jokes become reality Mm -hmm. and you don't realize until you're in that situation that oh now this is how this is being perceived because i'm saying this or because i'm saying that i feel like this down girl taking it the wrong way Mm -hmm. so always trying to um overcompensate or being over nice or trying to facilitate for others is how it's annoying because I'm black and I'm passionate. Mm. So don't don't misconstrue the two. If I want to be angry, oh gosh. But if I just want to be myself, then that's who I am. It's in me. It's what I do, and it's not anger. It's just that 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 stereotype doesn't help, especially in this climate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I think you're right. I think it's that thing, like you said, it's people already having a notion of what a black woman is mm. and then you coming in trying to combat that stereotype mm. and then you touched on something like you said maybe being tall maybe being a bit darker skin or it could be your hairstyle it could be the clothes you wear mm. all these things kind of mm. add up to mm. the perception or the box that people want to put you in or the label they want to stick mm. on you mm-hmm. um and you said that something interesting now we see then we do that thing of overcompensating mm-hmm. of trying to okay and I definitely have done that, especially like yeah. in workspaces yeah. or education 100%. spaces. Or Everyone I'm going to be super nice. So they realise I'm a friendly black person. Yeah. Black, we are friendly. I promise yeah. you, we're really nice. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Do you think that is the best way to combat stereotypes? So just generally speaking, by um, I think at times <laughs> for myself is having to allow people in. Some people. We live in London. You know, I I've always lived in London, so I'm used to being in the city and it's very multicultural i've been in completely different environments and some environments i go into and regardless of how mixed they are i'm perceived well and in others it's based on what you know so you may not have actually had a black friend or yeah. been around black people mm-hmm. and you're nervous yeah. so and for me just to have peace of mind because <laughs> calm is my superpower you know i just try it's and sometimes i'm compensating and sometimes it's just like you just need to know that it's it's, it's okay you know yeah. that just be easy because we was discussing this a little bit earlier when i would say sometimes i've had to really take a step back and be like i'm away from home even though london's like a hub mm-hmm. you know i'm not from here even though i've lived and i've been born here mm-hmm. my family's come here and now that we've had all of these conversations that we're having sometimes people need to be introduced into what it is to be black for us mm. and not what is the stereotype or the yeah. culture yeah. and you know trying to have conversations with people and sometimes they appropriate things that they associate with being black yeah. which is annoying because <laughs> that's not my blackness yeah. but let me help you know what my blackness yeah. is yeah. you know we're cool yeah so yeah and no. yeah what you said about like them not experiencing what it is to be around a black person mm. i really felt that because mm-hmm. at uni it was just like okay cool I'm the only black girl here. I don't know what they know about black people mm-hmm. and um, whether or not like I live up to that. Mm-hmm. But it was just like, I don't know how to act, like mm-hmm. even just like myself. Mm-hmm. So like even at uni, it was just like, what do I do? Who do I be? <laughs> like who yeah. do I become? Like mm-hmm. just to make them comfortable. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, that shouldn't have to be the case. Mm-hmm. And going mm-hmm. back to like the angry black girl mm-hmm. uh, or woman stereotype, it's just like, other people can be angry, but why is it an issue yeah. Yeah. when it's yeah. me? Like yeah. if, 100%. I, if like the anger, it doesn't even have to be rational or logical, but yeah. like if I'm angry or something about mm-hmm. something, that's how I feel. Yeah. So why is it now that you're scared of how I feel, but mm-hmm. at yeah. one point in your life, you may have felt angry too. Yeah. Yeah. So why is that an association to us mm-hmm. is what baffles me. Mm-hmm. I, I do feel like it has got to a point now where it's like the ownership is on you if you feel a way yeah. about somebody that you've not met. If you perceived somebody to be angry, mm-hmm. it's not up to them to make you change their personality yeah. or do mm-hmm. something to make you feel more comfortable. It's it's up to you to step out of yourself and say, yeah. okay, I don't even know you to even be feeling mm-hmm. like a way <laughs> yes, about you exactly. yes, as a person. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's up to you to kind of be like, come on, that's that's ignorant like it's naive to believe mm. 
something that is it's just not physically possible yeah. for what you yeah. think to yeah. be true yeah. without yeah. you finding out for yourself if it yeah. is you know yeah. so i think it is definitely up to you yeah i agree i think you know there is a problem with us always trying to make everyone else feel comfortable yeah. um and then at our own expense sort mm-hmm. of thing yeah and you touched yeah. on something like sometimes maybe i'm angry for no reason maybe i just like woke up a bit late and i'm just a bit yeah. annoyed i'm just yeah. in a bad mood yeah. mm-hmm. we should have the freedom to feel that mm-hmm. women in general are expected to be always be happy and always be smart like yeah. that's what people desire mm. but then we have then got the aggression that is attached to the black woman specifically yeah um if, if a white woman's upset okay she's upset she's annoyed they want her to smile fine but then if it's a black woman it's automatically gone oh, all the way left, yeah. it's aggression, yeah. it's anger, you know what yeah. I mean? And I think we do, it isn't our responsibility to change stereotypes. No. It isn't our responsibility no. to combat what people fe- okay. think or feel about us. It's our responsibility to just be, be. Yeah. just be and just live, mm. you know? Without having to think about everybody else and how they're going to feel yeah. and how it's going to impact them. And just be ourselves and live without, I mean, it's easier said than done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. easier said than done. But like you said, it's yeah. like, that's on them to kind of, fix whatever that is within them. Yeah. It's not our job to fix that for them. Oh, I think, um, yeah. I think it's know. like, it's so easy to snap into that, okay, let me like, you know, appease mm. you. Yeah. Or like, because you're just mm. so used to like, having to play mm-hmm. that role and like, be that character. I'm not saying that you're not that person, yeah. Yeah. but sometimes like, sometimes like, I'm so happy. It's like, I'm, I'm drained by the end <laughs> yeah. of the day. It's like, yeah. I just can't do this <laughs> anymore. <laughs> You know, and it's like, it's like, why? Like, why do you have to do that? Yeah. Like, just, just relax. Like, just know what it's like to yeah. relax mm-hmm. for a minute, you know? Mm-hmm. I felt that. Like, even when <laughs> I used to work at Sainsbury's, like Sainsbury's mm-hmm. was my first ever job. Mm-hmm. And like, they're all about like excellent customer service, yeah. Mm-hmm. To me, like, just be myself. So like, I'm I'm a nat- naturally smiley person. Yeah. So like, eight hour shift, I'm there, like every customer, like, hi. I'm like, <laughs> at the end of my shift, like my cheeks are in pain and I never knew like your cheeks could actually like yeah. get a workout, but it's just like, I need to appear to be happy. So like mm. you stay a customer and you keep buying mm. here, but it's just like, it is physically draining. Like I go home and like, don't, nobody make me laugh. Yeah. Like my cheeks are in pain. Yeah. Like, and, I, and, yeah. and I agree, cause at times you, we, spend so much of our time being performative yeah it's constant Mm -hmm. you know like constantly having to show up you Mm -hmm. know and Mm -hmm. i think i'm more than ever of of late just decided to show up as myself and you know just allow myself to feel certain things Mm -hmm. if i and not worrying how that comes across too much because you're too and especially as a woman and again being black and then being a female professional and then you've got all of these other titles you know we're constantly wearing many hats Mm -hmm. and we're constantly doing things and i think i'm at a point in my life that i'm aware of my age i'm aware of what i want to do as women we can do so much and even the conversation around blackness you know we've come far as black people but there's still so far to to go go. and it's just like how what do you carry what do you choose to pick up and Mm -hmm. how do we allow ourselves to genuinely not be exhausted at the end of the day (laughs) because I've had to start to train myself and it's been like a year to switch off. Don't do the extra. Mm. You finish work, go home, (laughs) you know, go and do what everyone else is doing. Don't stay that extra hour. Everyone else is gone, you know, like you're still going to get paid the same, you know what I mean? And I've worked in retail um, myself. So I love, I love talking, you can tell. I like getting to know people, but as well, there is times where you have to switch off and like, bring it back in and realize, okay, if you've had a great day, now I can think about all the stuff that might have made me sad, Mm. but I've had to put that on pause. And Mm. just learning how to deficiate is something that we have to do all the time, just as people of color, Mm. you know, all the time trying to, and I keep on bringing it back to that thing of we're away from home. Yeah. Because when you get home, you take it all off. Mm. We relax and everyone Mm. takes all off and relax, but we actually relax. We can, I can talk different at home. Mm. I can bust that joke at home. Mm. You know, even like when you're talking about being in certain environments, I know for myself, I run banter. So like, I'm not someone that wants to take lunch to work, but all my colleagues brought lunch to work. (laughs) And I remember one day, like I I put olives or something random in my pasta. I love 
olives anyway but i used to do stuff just to trigger people because it's like you're expecting me to come here and have something that i'm not gonna have you know what i mean or having other people in the workplace buy food that they think is culturally appropriate for me and then try to share it and all of these things and i'm like i get i'm trying to be i'm gonna accommodate you but you need to have manners but it's always having to have this Okay, that's fine. I'm not going to give you the Credit, recipe yeah, for that or tell you that I know how to cook that or I don't eat that and I don't eat that at home either. But because you think I do, thank you, you know. And it's always like a performance of not trying to come across angry yeah. or aggressive or st- whatever it is, there's always that thing there. Yeah. So, yeah. What do you think of about the idea of being the strong? I was really good. I was going to talk about that. Right, yeah, go, go. So I know, like, right now, there's, like, a whole movement of, like, black women trying to be Mm -hmm. soft, which is literally, like, be expressive, be in Mm -hmm. your emotion, feel the emotion, Mm -hmm. don't, like, hold it down. Mm -hmm. And I really, like, resonate with that because Mm -hmm. all of my life, I've literally been, like, thinking away my feelings. I'll be like, Mm -hmm. do I need to feel like this right now? No, so don't. And then continue with my life. But, like it all builds up and it catches up with you mm-hmm. and it's just like wow like i have a lot of repressed stuff that i haven't even 100%. like dealt with and it's just like now that i haven't been in practice of talking about how i feel it's mm-hmm. like a diff it's like learning a new language it's just like i don't know how to say how i feel yeah and like i still struggle today but like i'm working on it i'll go to counseling yeah and stuff like that just to help because like i don't think that we should not be expressive because yeah. it is detrimental to us like mm-hmm. further down the line yeah. and yeah like i feel like being being soft is like i don't know if if we're talking like general generally mm. it means like to me it would have meant being weak mm. and like mm. i i'm the oldest child so i've had mm. to like look after my siblings so mm. i had to, like there was no weakness allowed like yeah. you had to be strong you had to take care of them make sure everything got done mm. so when it was like growing up and like all my siblings have grown up now it's just like wow like I only have to take care of myself yeah. and like I don't know how to do that so it's kind of strange yeah. that all my life I've just had to be like can't cry like I haven't cried in front of anyone until I got to like sixth form a level yeah. a level results that day but like yeah. that's the first time I cried in front of anyone I was angry at myself for crying yeah. and it was just like a lot I felt so overwhelmed with like emotion mm-hmm. it's like wow like I haven't felt this yeah. I don't know what to do with myself. I'm like paralyzed. I'm I'm the same. Like I don't like to cry in front of people. <laughs> like I feel cheated <laughs> if I do. And just like I'll have this little outburst for like five seconds, and then it's like gone yeah. again. Yeah. You know, I I feel that as well. Yeah. yeah. Even yeah. with the crying thing, it was just like okay, cool. I didn't feel like I was allowed to cry. Yeah. So then I felt like my body like accepted that so like yeah. there's times where i wanted to yeah. cry like i literally sat down put on drink <laughs> i want to cry but like the you. tears will not come like mm. all this yeah. all my life has been like like yeah. crying is a weakness mm. like don't do it like mm. people are going to be pitying you okay. it's yeah. just like yo like everybody cries like mm-hmm. why is it an issue mm-hmm. I, yeah i agree with you and i think one of the first points that you said which i think is amazing is that you're going to therapy and that you're getting the help. And I like the fact that in our community, there's a lot of conversation around people. Because mm. before, because I've had therapy and it's like, I work in that early help. So like I was saying, like preparing, you know, young children and families to get ready for that stage of what that looks like. Because not everyone's mm. ready mm. to start therapy, but yeah. you need to start having those early interventions to get you there. Mm. And I think for myself, even like when you're saying that you being the older sibling, you know, I wear that responsibility um, in my family in a different way. So like mm-hmm. I'm the eldest cousin and there's loads of us. Mm-hmm. And I've got all of these, these things that I've had to put on. And I think this year is like one of the years that my friends have seen me cry the most. Remember when I was saying to yeah. you guys earlier that I allowed myself to feel. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Carly, you don't have to do this. And it's like, when I'm talking to them, I'm like, yeah, girl, um, this, 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 and this, 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 and this, this, this did happen. <laughs> but you're, we're so used to you being a certain, wearing this, oh, I'm fine, I can do it. It's yeah. exhausting. Yeah. And I think I've really, like even now I see my voice the shook, like shaked. Because I'm getting comfortable with... With expressing yourself, yeah. With expressing myself and showing up. And I think being strong means that you have to be soft. You know, we're women. Mm -hmm. And that sounds so lovely, but it genuinely is. Being strong, you have to be soft, you know? Yeah. There's... 
you can't have one without the other. Yeah, you know, like it, you yeah. can't. You know, you have to really deal with your feelings the way you can. Mm-hmm. And I think being a woman, you know, we give birth. We are in the home. Not everyone's maternal. Not everyone has these things. You develop them, and you have to show up for other people. So even like being an elder sibling and having that responsibility, you have to always show up. Mm-hmm. You know, all the time. But I think wearing that hat and understanding that it's okay and i I didn't know that it was a thing that women are trying to be softer at this point in time but i think that's a good thing you know because sometimes we wore that oh yeah i'm this i'm miss independent i can do this Mm. i can do that you're not meant to yeah you don't have to it's great don't get me wrong you know i'm a ugandan woman Mm -hmm. as well and you know we're generally both soft but we get it yeah and i think that's something that i've had to allow myself to be culturally aware of who i am where i come from and where the strength Mm. you know not that bending over not trying to come across a little something different but stand you know Mm. like standing that and what it is to feel and that looks different for everybody but it's how you show up in that you know Mm -hmm. I think it's it's interesting because there's an expectation on black women to be strong. Yeah. You're expected to even yeah. if you watch like you watch the American movies, the big mama, the rock of the family, yeah. Yeah. the single black woman oh. that holds it down and gets mm-hmm. stuff yeah. done. So there's an expectation to be strong. And we've mm-hmm. also for some reason lived up to that expectation, again mm-hmm. at our own expense. Yeah. And I think specifically for black women, we haven't been given the opportunity to be soft. Mm-mm. If I'm and this is generalizations, but mm-hmm. if I'm thinking about culturally in black homes. You know, like women are work. The girls are working hard. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you mentioned, obviously, like being the oldest, um, the oldest, and having to look after, and it's just doing all this kind of backbreaking work to make sure everybody else is okay. Mm. There's no sense of like being pampered and looked up. That's not yeah, something that yeah. you associate with mm. black women. No. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That mm. thing of oh, I'm going to have a spot. If now it is. <laughs> now we do for ourselves. But if you're talking yeah. about generally speaking, it's not really things you associate. It's always hard working, looking after everyone else, looking after home. It's always like on the go for everyone else. And then what happens to us? What happens to our self-care? Burn out. Burn out. And then that thing of like not feeling like you even can um, be expressive of what you're really feeling. If mm. not, you're moaning, you're this, you're yeah, you're that, yeah. or whatever it is. Not being able to say, no, actually, I don't want to do this. Even the thing of the independent woman, if I decide, actually, I don't want to be the independent woman, yeah. I want to be taken care of, then all of a sudden, oh, I'm a gold digger. <laughs> oh, I'm something. <laughs> Always a negative stereotype. Oh attached to us trying to have an element of self-care and yeah. it's such a shame and yeah. it's i mean i'm glad like you said um there's, there's new conversations happening where we're kind of taking yeah. back some form of power which i still think is and i think that's a sign of strength taking back yeah. power in that we're saying you know what we hurt as well we yeah. bleed as well yeah. and we need to take out time and rebuild and and do what we need to do so we can be okay because inevitably when we're more when we're okay, we're better for everyone else yeah, as well. Yeah, 100%. Um, rather than when we're like suppressing everything yeah. that we're feeling. I like what you were saying about how it's been that way for years. And I think to add that we're changing the narrative, mm. but I've also had it in a way where I want to have the spa day. I want to do these things. And sometimes people look at you if you put value in yourself. Mm. And it's just like, no, yes. I have a standard. Yeah. I want to... I love going to the gym, but it's because I'm going for the sauna and steam afterwards. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I need that. That's mm-hmm. the whole point. Yeah. Or I want to buy this thing. I want to treat myself yeah. in a certain way and have that and not feel that I should. Because I've had to change the script in my head of being like, you don't have to struggle. You don't have to work <laughs> hard. You don't have to do the extra. You can do, show up as yourself, but not have this thing where you're always trying to overdo. Mm-hmm. And back to the point where I was saying, um, to your point about how it's always been that way you know if I get a little bit deep when we look back in history and the way things were that was something that was instilled Mm -hmm. you know to obviously if we go in you get what I mean I was gonna say that yeah it was instilled and it's like as we go further and we keep on going further it's just like we're taking back the narrative you know Mm -hmm. it's it's not every day that we're gonna be singing um sad songs <laughs> but those songs got us through yeah. you mm-hmm. know and even when it comes back to being like oh everyone talks about oh um i saw this meme where it was just like about americans and it's like oh but it's not every day we're kings and queens <laughs> but there's some things that are innate in how you treat yourself mm-hmm. and how you see yourself mm-hmm. and we've picked up a lot of things that wasn't ours yeah and now we're putting them down yeah and mm-hmm. in the putting down you have to learn what it is to love yourself mm-hmm. again and this is this is the step that we're doing it. and if everyone does it like you said we're better 
for each other mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. on a whole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think maybe like historically, mm -hmm. black people kind of have had to be a bit more resilient yeah. mm -hmm. because it seems like, you know, every like one step for you, someone else is 10 steps for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have to like keep knocking on those doors, keep having those doors slammed in your faces, mm -hmm. keep working, keep growing, keep pushing yourself, keep mm -hmm. believing in yourself, keep 100%. going. And if you didn't have that strength behind mm -hmm. you to do that, mm -hmm. then you might just crumble into 100%. like a ball, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. But I think that is one of the reasons why a lot of times as black women, we don't want to face what we're feeling because we're 100%. scared of that crumbling yeah it's like if i start to pay attention to all the stuff that's wrong all the stuff yeah. i'm really feeling mm. how do i handle that i don't because yeah. we're not used to it so how yeah. what how do i function in that space do you know what i mean yeah, you know? yeah. and obviously that's why like therapy comes in because that's that safe space where mm -hmm. they're able to kind of walk yeah. you through those emotions but yeah. if you're by yourself and you're like with all those things it's like you almost don't know what to do with it because it's mm -hmm. like what we know is to keep going to keep it moving yeah. as black people as a whole but then obviously particularly as black yeah. women you were going to say yeah. that no, like you guys both spoke about like historically. Mm -hmm. um, so like media is how we consume a lot of like information mm -hmm. and like stars and trends and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like we didn't have black people when media first started. So it was mm -hmm. literally like white people's perception not of black people mm -hmm. being put in media. Like and for years, even up until now, there's some perceptions of black people in shows which are just like they like yeah. they yeah. do you know a black is a black person <laughs> writing this with you and allowing you to put it on tv yeah. but it's like things like that it, and that's how we were brought up so like i don't know that's a raven she was like mm. fashionable she was loud she mm. was like um cheeky or sassy mm. and like that's how like other people who watch that show who are not black would be like oh this is how black people yeah. are yeah so like yeah. we have to be like again performative mm -hmm. but like that's not who we are that's not what being black is yeah. for us yeah so like even with like being expressive and stuff mm -hmm. it's just like when we are like, people are confused or like <laughs> yes are you allowed to feel this yeah, way like yes i'm a person yeah. and if i feel like this it's valid like yes. i don't need you invalidating my feelings yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. if you don't fit the stereotype mm. it's like Oh, an attack on them. You're, you're yeah. not like other black people. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I'm, I'm the black person that you're yeah. talking to. Yes. Like, yeah. what does that even yeah. mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. when they really they're saying you're not the stereotype that I was expecting yeah. exactly. you to be. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But there's black people, we're so versatile. Like, we can be whatever we you, want. We can yeah. literally be whatever exactly. we want. And it's not based upon the colour of our skin. Like, yeah. we're just who we are. It's you know okay I mean? to be the alternative black girl. You don't have to have, <laughs> yeah. you don't have to be what that looks like. Yeah. And I think for me, I love music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm always at different shows. I listen to, and I've, that has been my life. And for example, I love Florence and the Machine, the same way I love Amy Winehouse, but then I listen to Nina Mason, mm -hmm. Simone, I like, Kendrick Lamar, but because of my love for music, it's put me in different environments, mm -hmm. you know? And sometimes you stay out of certain environments because it doesn't fit the local yeah. stereotypes that you're <laughs> used to. So you limit your experiences because you don't want to go somewhere because you don't feel like you're yes. accepted. Yeah. And I found that, you know, because of music, it's allowed me to be in different rooms. Mm -hmm. I've gone to different shows. I've enjoyed different things. Mm -hmm. I've got friends that like the opera. I've been, I've cried. But at the same time, I'm going, I'll listen to, you know, Drill, Garage. But being able to have so many cultures within you expose you to different people. And I think this is one thing when you're always trying to fit what it looks like. Like, that's a Raven was lit. But yeah. not everyone's like that, you it's know? Because like yeah. I'm definitely going to show my age now. But I used to love, like, Tiana. I think, yeah, Tiana, Ta Taina, this is how you know, I forgot <laughs> it. But Taina was another show of this black girl and they had, they were very different, but you've got a sister. Taina. Yeah, Ta yeah, Taina. <laughs> I'm showing my age, because I don't know what you guys are talking yeah. about. Yeah. I loved it. But then I love Sister Sister. Yeah, yeah, but, it's that, being, yeah. but my latest show is, um, it's called Hide Fidelity and it's got um, Zoe Kravitz, she's the oh, lead, yeah. it's amazing. But again, it's that different 
just mm. getting to see us in different ways. Like I love She's Got to Have It, even though it was oh, yeah. made obviously again for us. It's being able to see black girls that like art that are mm. doing different things <laughs> and we're not, you know, the same way we watched Moesha. You've got different personalities. We yeah. like different things yeah. and being able to be different and not seen as, oh, you're a sellout yeah. or you're like this yeah. or you're like that because you have different a coconut, or is it a bounty? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. or you're this, or you're that. Yeah. It, it's long, yeah. or they think that you're, you know, no. I just, <laughs> I just like what I like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think again, because we we actually accepted the stereotypes that were given to us, mm -hmm. so, so that we sometimes, even as black people, we played into that, or yeah. we criticize other black people for not looking yeah. like the stereotype yeah. as well. For like sure. they so can't think of like, oh, you're talking like a white person. All those kind yeah. of little yeah. things. Um, yeah we've played into the stereotypes that they've given us, which is yeah. a shame. And I do love like what you said, that we're just putting down what they've given us and we're just taking back our kind of freedom yeah. to just yeah. be who we are. And I think that's beautiful. Moving from there, what do you love about black women? I love our hair. Like our <laughs> hair <laughs> is literally <laughs> magic. Like mm. I don't care, like science can tell you all it wants. Our hair is yeah. magic. Especially for us to have different types, textures, coils and kinks. Like mm. the thing we can do with it, like, that's why I was talking about it earlier. Like I love changing my hair, yeah. but at uni it was like a big problem. Like, <laughs> mm. I, oh, Yessie, like, is that yours? Like, can I can I feel it? How did you get it this way? Mm. Like, weren't you a redhead yesterday? <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, okay. Okay, like it's yeah. my hair. Just say you like it or you don't yeah. like it. Move yeah. on with your day. But yeah. it was just like the ability to like snap and change and like yeah. do different things. I really, really love it. Yeah. And I've been, I used to relax my hair again to fit in with like being the stereotype that white people want us to be like straight hair, long mm -hmm. nails, whatever. So I stopped relaxing my hair after I got burnt. So this was like, Oh, yeah. when I was in Same like story. year nine <laughs> and I was story. like mom I've had enough like <laughs> don't want to do this anymore mm. so like I transitioned I didn't cut okay. so then I, I learned I, I needed a length so I learned how to like do bantu knots and like just yeah. work with the hair that I had and I just mm. saw the beauty in my hair and I was mm. like yo like I've been missing out yeah. so yeah I've been natural for like five plus years now and oh, I was just wow. like wow I've seen my hair grow I've seen it do this I've seen it be curly I'm just like this is magic. You can't tell me that it's not. Yeah. But I think yeah. it's I think it's crazy, like just like talking about hair. Obviously, like mm. I mean, like for me, like my hair's really important to me. Yeah. And but it wasn't always. Like okay. we all went through the stage of like having relaxers, I'm <laughs> sure, like <laughs> being told, Oh, your hair ain't it. <laughs> you like, know? It's too rough. Like, yeah, like yeah. your hair's picky, your hair doesn't grow, like yeah. all all yeah. we've all heard it. We all know <laughs> what we're talking about. And then like it's like mentioning bantu knots like i had a random conversation with a friend which kind of led to like me just having this life-changing experience like mm. growing out my hair and it was like it was like life-changing it was like amazing but at the same time it was kind of sad because mm. Like I started growing out my natural hair when I was 24 mm. and I didn't even know what my hair looked like oh, wow. i didn't know how it grew i didn't know what it did like mm -hmm. i didn't know it could be the way that it is mm -hmm. i knew nothing about my hair because all my life for that 20 something years i'd i'd been like told so much like you need to be like this you need to fit yeah. the mold you need to like have straight hair this is what's beautiful this is what's and yeah. like it's, it was like shackles being like yeah. taken off you and it's like Love see that. me like this is me and yeah. this is beautiful and mm -hmm. like black women black people mm -hmm. are beautiful like as yeah. they are mm -hmm. and that's that so yeah beautiful. it was yeah. it was very enriching to yeah. step into that space mm -hmm. yeah that's so beautiful honestly so beautiful i have um hair's always been a part of my life mm -hmm. of course but i was that kid with big hair cried you'd hear me crying getting the mm. hair done hot comb all of that <laughs> like hair has been a big part of my life and i was raised by my grandma who loved everything hair so she looked after it and it was like the routine and i had that hair you know everyone would see me and be like oh yeah you know the jesus loves you clips and the bubbles and all this stuff i was that child and i remember cutting my hair at 17 and i remember being in the hair salon and the lady's like, are you sure? Are you sure? 
and she went and i remember feeling the hair go <laughs> like off. It, yeah. like i felt it like drop and i was like wow but since then i've done everything i think and i've done everything the only thing i haven't done is colored it i colored it in school when you know when you go through that phase and it all dropped the ends broke and then it grew back but my whole point is hair's been a journey but i love what you were saying about the different textures and even like what you said what i thought was so beautiful is not you not knowing what your hair could do mm. and then getting to this point that's the stuff when we're putting it down it's yes. just like i don't yeah. have to look like that mm, and even yeah. like for me i remember going for my current job and having my hair a certain style you know or go <laughs> that you know that having the fringe of the straight hair and oh, okay. and and it's crazy how i've ended up here because <laughs> i was saying to you guys i've been at home can't go to the hair salon i can't bother to do it i knew how to do my hair like i said but i just i was i woke up one day and i was like i can't be bothered i am not going to get it braided it was actually my best friend's birthday she was turning 30 and i had to show up and i couldn't i didn't want to turn up in a head wrap i didn't want to turn up with all and i was like do you know what going to the barbers and he's like, you're cutting it. And I was like, yeah. And now, like I was saying to you earlier, I like it really low. <laughs> so you know that like, there's the right way to be bald. So I'm like, yeah, give me a little bit of a, don't give me a line, so I'm not a man, but give me this. <laughs> but it's weird. You could have never told me at the beginning of the year that I was going to cut my hair. Never, because everyone knows hair is part of my identity. Mm -hmm. I'm always changing. I'm always in the salon. I'm always doing new things. And now I've just got myself a wig, so I'm excited about that. <laughs> but it's, it's a part of who we are. And I think mm -hmm. it's, you've got to wear it. It's your crown, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And it's like wearing, obviously I don't have any right now, <laughs> so I'm wearing me, Still. but it's a part of, it's just beautiful, but I'm really just in love with that point about yeah. being able to see your hair and seeing how it grows and yeah. what's different, because that's important. Yeah. And I think black girls, we've been on this journey where everyone's doing the transition and we're talking about, yeah. we've got quotes like forcey and knowing your, <laughs> your, your curl pattern. And yeah. I love it because mm -hmm. we need to be doing that and it's not it's i think i saw a picture the other day and it went viral of all these students that had gone to school and they all rocked yeah. their afros i, saw that, yeah. I, saw, yeah. I, saw I was it. like yeah i was like that's it because yeah. that's who we are yeah. you know wear your hair like yeah. and if you want to change if you want to be long or short we can do that too but yeah. this is who i am and i don't the pressure of having to always be i think i watched napoli ever after oh, yeah. oh um, my god <laughs> napoli ever after yes <laughs> yeah but you know what i mean yeah. it's just like you you'd wake up in the morning and you're so scared that your hair looks a certain way, so you're running into the bathroom to do, it's, mm. it's not us, just yeah. be you. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Cause like, even when like you got your hair relaxed and it rained the next day, it was just like, oh, yo, your hair is your telling mind. you <laughs> that it's your... not supposed to be like this. And then your mom's like, oh, you have to go again. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. yo, but I feel like humidity, the process. Avo Literally. Avoiding. And mm. even, I think that's the thing. Cause when I was wearing the relaxer, making sure you've got an umbrella. Like this week, <laughs> it's been raining, as you can see. Yeah. Or a plastic bag. Oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Like your hair is not a or not swimming. I love swimming. I didn't yeah. swim for oh years because of my hair. Yeah. It's swimming, yeah. It's swimming to this day. Oh. It's traumatic. Yeah, but like I used to wear a lot of it, like braids and stuff. Yeah. So like, one, my hair wouldn't fit in the, the swimming cap. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. when it comes to swimming lessons, it's like, I have, I have a big, big ass head. And everyone's looking at me like, yo, you look like an alien. Yeah. But it's just I like, I just wanted to like swim, but like, yeah. It's like, you, when you, and then it's the moment of truth, like when you want to take it off and it's just like, are my roots still okay? Yeah. Are the braids going to smell? Like, yeah. it's just like, it takes the joy yeah. out of swimming. Yeah. But it's just like, yo, just like, let it be. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Just going back to like, what you were saying about like that picture though. I think it's crazy that like in 2020, Mm. If, a, if like a bunch of girls wear their hair out, mm. that's a viral yeah. event. No, yes. <laughs> it's like, really, this is, you, you know, no, no. like why, like why is this going viral in 2020? Mm. Do you know what though? I'm glad that they're catching it early. Yeah. Cause they're, sec yes. they're secondary, secondary school secondary, students, right, aren't yeah. they? Like for, oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, so for a lot of us, it's happening, it's happened late. Mm. It happened really late. Cause again, so it's literally like all of you, like when it's through the same thing of just doing mm. everything, but take care of my actual yeah, hair that grows yeah. out of my head. And yeah. then getting older and being like, actually, I love my hair. Yeah. I love everything that I can do with it. So I'm glad that they're getting it early, that yeah. they've kind yeah. of been inspired so and they're, like, they're embracing, embracing it, it embracing it so they don't have to go through what we went through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the chemical burns and oh. whatnot. Yeah. Flashbacks. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I just had one and it was just like, I must have had like twists. Hmm. And I think it was like either year 
six or five and someone told me why do you have snakes coming out of your head yeah. and i remember oh going gosh. home to my why mom like, like like that? yo like they look like snakes <laughs> i don't know what kind of snake you've seen but like yeah. it's a hair do you, i don't know if you have the fred hairstyle I was. I told my mom never because like I was so scared that I no, that was gonna make like, fun of oh, me. Yeah, I, I remember having that, and it's oh, you look like Medusa. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, it. yeah that's, that's, that's what I was thinking. thinking. But it's nice that we've come to a place where we're actually like, and, and so, yeah, <laughs> mind the business. And, that's yeah. Yeah. and I think it's the, <laughs> it's the audacity that it has to be a topic. Yeah. So like mm. you're saying that like, oh my gosh, 2020, this is what's gone viral. Mm. It's it's that like, yeah, small progress, but it's just like really, it's mm. taken us this long. Yeah to be okay with being ourselves. And that shows you again, how much there is this role that we have to keep mm-hmm. up to all yeah. the time. Yeah. And I like the fact that we've got this black girl magic and we're embracing mm-hmm. the curls and we're doing all of these things. And the, the key thing that you said is catching it early. Yeah. Honestly, I remember having a friend at school and she was natural because we were all relaxed and she wanted to perm her hair. And I, th- I think I nearly, I, I was onto her. I think I nearly cried. Like, I remember this story well, and I was like, don't do it, don't do it. And I think she permed her hair late, but she still has beautiful hair, like she's looked after it. But another thing about hair is how much time I used to be in the salon every weekend <laughs> and then every other week or this or like, mm. I swear to you, I want my time back. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's another reason why I was not going to sit there to get braided. I was like, I'm not doing this. It's a lot. I was like, I'm not doing that either. I was like, I don't have time. I need my time back. I can't be at the salon every weekend or every other weekend, my whole Saturday is gone. I'm not doing it anymore. And obviously there's balance because yeah. I will definitely grow back and I'll be back in the salon. But for this season, it was just like, I wanted, freedom. I just, I, yeah, I wanted yeah. to be free, yeah, freedom. So there's journeys with your hair, yeah. you yeah. know. What's an, uh, an, an internal trait that you love about black women, maybe? I mean, obviously it's going to be a generalization either yeah. way, but is there something kind of an internal trait you think that, that you associate with black women? that you like? It's gonna sound mad, but it's just like, going back to the stereotypes, like being strong or resilient. Yeah. Like even though it's like a stereotype with like negative connotations, like owning that narrative and just like actually being strong, like there's so yeah. many people who have like come from nothing. Like mm. I'm gonna say Issa Rae, like she was just like an awkward black girl. Like she didn't mm. fit the narrative at the time when she was doing it but now like look at her she has her own show she's mm. writing shows movies starring in movies as well and i really i really like that because like yeah. all the dedication and the hard work and the effort is paying off mm. so it's like literally like for the younger generation it's like you can do this too if yeah. you are as dedicated as passionate mm. as hard working as resilient mm. So it's just like, wow, like if we could do that, we could literally do anything. Like we could take over the world, like just give it time. We're gonna be (laughs) running things, like I believe it. Like the first thing that like came to my mind was like, like without again, going like back to the stereotypes, Mm. like there's like, there's, there is like a, like a fierceness. Even if it's like your, your great grandma and she's like 96 (laughs) or something, she's got like, she's got that thing you know <laughs> and i can't like describe it it's like that fire, fire. yeah that, fire. Like, that's yeah fire. <laughs> that's like yeah that's it yeah. that's it yeah um it's our essence so like you yes. mentioned the essence yeah it's the yeah, essence because like you mentioned <laughs> grandma like my grandma's like my muse like i love her but i've seen her do so many roles so she's a wife you know, and she's the strongest woman I know. But to my granddad, I saw him love her every day. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I saw him lead. And I've always lived in a household where I was able to see love. Mm. And that's important to what I look for in myself at times, because I'm now learning to be like her. So I do all of this stuff. And I'm like, this is why I can't even settle, you know? Because I yeah. know that I've Never. been able to see a strong woman, yeah. but I've also, this is what I mean about being strong and soft. Yeah. Because she's still that person, don't ever get it twisted. Like, <laughs> no one wants to cross my nan, you know? But she was strong in the right ways, you know? And it, I think that leads into like, just like her faith, you know, like she was a woman of faith. And I see that in her. You know, I see the way she, the way she is, she's meek, but she can be mm-hmm. stern, you know, mm-hmm. she can, I've barely seen her cry mm-hmm. in, but that wasn't in a way that she didn't have emotion. Mm-hmm. She would cry when it, when we would say it was necessary, mm-hmm. but it's how we wear those hats. And it's like now that she's older, you know, she always used to say this saying, um, 
once a man, twice a child. Mm -hmm. And it's like having to see her now as my grandmother and knowing what she was like mm -hmm. and looking at her, I think that's what we all carry it. And she comes from that generation that's so different. So like as a woman, like even all of these beautiful women mm -hmm. behind us here, I think we have an essence that is a part of us, which is the strength, but we are resilient in the right ways. It's our joy, you know, our rhythm. That we create so much, the way we love, the food we make, you know, the there's so much that we give that's just a part of who we are culturally. And I think it's beautiful to be a part of it, regardless of what we've been through. I don't think I would ever want to be anything but black. Yeah. And I'm not just saying it, like, it's lit. Mm -hmm. Like, we have fun. <laughs> yeah. I'm black in London, but I go to all our lit spots, you know. Yeah. Eventually we'll own everything <laughs> one day. But you know what I mean in that way? But we can be wherever we want to be and bring yeah. our vibe, yeah. you know, yeah. that, and that's just us. And I think that's innate, like a black woman, how can you not? And it's not, you know, I think it, um, it's Tina Knowles. Um, mm. She says it in the beginning, it's an interlude on Solange's Seat at the Table album. And she's talking about being passionate and being black is not anti-white, mm -hmm. you know, it's I'm pro-black and I love mm -hmm. being black mm -hmm. and there's nothing bad about that, but for you to think that is, mm -hmm. it's a suppression. It's like, you want to suppress me mm -hmm. by not allowing me to be flamboyantly mm -hmm. black and happy, mm -hmm. you know? And that looks different for everybody. Yeah. But I think as a woman, and being a black woman, it's our essence. Mm -hmm. And I like when people un do things unapologetically in mm -hmm. their true self and whatever that looks like for them mm -hmm. is what I think is beautiful yeah. about black women. I think for me, it would be um, passion as well. Yeah. And I think, like I said, it plays out in different ways. Yeah. It can be passion in terms of how we love. Yeah. Be passion in terms of for actual causes that we're just genuinely passionate about. Yeah. Um, in just how we just function, like mm. everything is just like the way we dance, the way we sing, yeah. everything yeah. is just like there it. is a passion it. Yeah. that is unmatched. That's like it. you That's cannot it. match the passion of a black woman. Oh, you cannot. You know. Um, so, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so as black women, do you feel like we need to support each other more? Do you think we support each other enough? If yes, if no, um, why? I feel like support can be never enough. That even makes sense. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, support yeah. is always that. welcome. Um, going back to like the natural hair thing and like mm -hmm. um, what you said about being in secondary school and like you didn't want her to mm -hmm. permit. There have been times where I've seen online where like there's other black women being like, oh, you shouldn't be relaxing your hair. You should be like leaving it natural. But like some black people still do relax their hair because that's how they want it to be. That's yeah. how like they can control it or like yeah. tame it or do what they need to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. So having that like, I don't know, like a like negative mm -hmm. kind of feedback on like how a black woman should be from another black woman. It's yeah, just like, yeah, yeah. don't do this. Like, yeah. This is what the white man wants us to do, tear each other down. But it's just like, we shouldn't have that, like stopping us from doing what we have to do and what is important. So like, I believe that like all support is like, welcome, there should be more. Mm -hmm. We should definitely keep like uplifting us, ourselves and putting each other, like straighten each other's crowns and mm -hmm. stuff. I really like that. Mm. Um, I like that. I like yeah. what you said about um, the hair, because I used to feel like I'd have to explain myself, like I'm not less conscious because I've got a perm. Mm. And I know <laughs> I've yeah. got a perm, yeah. I get it, but I do know this is not great, but it's tameable. Mm. Like I've got thick, thick, <laughs> thick, <laughs> thick <laughs> hair, yeah, <laughs> thick. Like, and it's long, yeah, it's long. And I permed my hair because it was easy, you know, mm. and that's, and obviously you have to go on a journey to it. And it's like, it got to a point where the burn, I'm not down for this. Yeah, mm. I remember um, being young and it was left in and we didn't know. And I remember going to school and the sun was shining and the front of my hair, like, even though we had washed it out, it mm. had clearly that part mm. hadn't been washed out. And the front was like, started to burn. Scab, and yeah. I remember like going home and like, it was like, oh my days, like, my mum was livid, you know, because obviously like my aunt had done it. And it was just like these things that it's just long. But mm. I think the initial thing, sorry, mm -hmm. I've digressed, but what was the actual, the <laughs> about question? Support. About black women, should, should we support, support each other? Yeah, yeah, so back about the support, I think it's beautiful 
that we've got strength in our relationships. I kind of value like my friendships. I value the women that I have as friends, you know, and they have been like a part of my journey, even though we know this, but having those friends and knowing that they know who they are, mm -hmm. we're able to edify each other. Mm -hmm. And like what you're saying about being online, I think people have always gonna have something to say. Yeah. And it's easy to have the Twitter fingers. It's easy to repost. It's easy to throw shade because there's a lot mm -hmm. of projection in people's in people's views and the way they see things. But I think as 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 females and as black women and just growing up, I think that there's been a change in the narrative in how we support one another. Mm -hmm. There is space for all of us and we can all kind of glow together and I'm not stealing your shine and you're not stealing mm -hmm. mine, but we can all show up. Mm -hmm. And your earlier point about like Issa Rae, I love her because she's, you watch Insecure and you see yourself. And I think it's even more important now that we're able to go and look and see ourselves. You know, it's so important to have representation mm -hmm. to even break that stigma of not being supportive, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and not cheering someone on because you're not able to see yourself in them or see yourself mm -hmm. differently. So I think there's definitely been a change and I think there's more to be done. And we could talk yeah, about the negatives, definitely. but I think sometimes we, in our community, we need to highlight the when things are going good, well, good, yeah. you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, yeah. Let me ask, um, who is a black female, famous or non-famous, that inspires you and why? Tina Turner. Oh, come <laughs> on. She's my girl from day. I love her. From day. She is such an inspiration. She is the epitome of passion <laughs> and black beauty. Yeah. <laughs> Tina Turner. Oh, wow. I feel like, man, I feel like her life, she's been through so much, but everything she did, I was talking about it the other day, I was saying how strong, like, you know when someone just walks into a room and their presence just, illuminates mm -hmm. the space mm -hmm. but she's always got a smile on her face mm -hmm. she's not the hard black woman mm -hmm. but she is the strong black woman mm -hmm. that everyone should be <laughs> i guess like i love her yeah. she's my heart <laughs> I, love I like that <laughs> um for me it would be like a teacher i had in primary school mm -hmm. um her name was mrs a she always had like a low cut, but mm -hmm. she had it like colored like, like a dark orange. But like every time she walked in the room, I just felt better. Like she mm. was confident. She knew how to, elo well, I was about to mess up a word. <laughs> she knew how to like um, speak well. And I was just like, wow, I want to be like her. Like mm -hmm. every time she like, even just walks down the corridor, I'd be like, wow, I just felt like a chill. <laughs> like I just, I wanted to be like her so much. Cause like, she was like one of two black teachers at the school. But like she taught me, so I was like, wow, I got to experience like what it was like to be like confident and like just own the room. Mm. So yeah, I really like that. Ah, oh, it's difficult. <laughs> yeah. Um, because black women are amazing. Yeah. But I would say my grandma, and obviously I've spoken about her a lot. <laughs> but my grandma, because she's just so strong, so soft. She's taught me so much. You know, she's the, you know, the woman. You know, that, that she comes from that time where, you know, they still wear slips under their clothes, <laughs> still proper, still like a lady. Yeah. But she's she's just so, she's still so much of herself at the same time. So, you know, like she's not far removed. I've taught her how to use WhatsApp. She, she all the things I love is because of her. So mm -hmm. my love for music, my love for culture, mm -hmm. and I can really be grateful, especially in the height of this year, for the time that like, I come from a family with strong women, you know, and they I could name them all because I spend a lot of time with them. But for her, it's like, you know, what's up comes down. It's like that essence of how she truly is has enabled me to put value on what it is to be black and what she's taught me and having those 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 things in the home is important. So my grandma, yeah. I like that. Um, the black female that inspires me is Erica Campbell. Like yeah. I absolutely, absolutely adore Erica Campbell. Yeah. And it goes back for me from when, from when I was younger, mm -hmm. loving mm -hmm. music, growing up in a Christian household. Her, then, um, obviously she was in the group Mary Mary. Mm -hmm. They brought up shackles. Yeah, Jeez. revolutionary. So that was the first like gospel song that I could sing outside that everyone knew about. And yeah. that was important for me. But then also I feel like she embodies a lot of the things that I desire to be. Um, obviously she was in a group. She broke out of that and did a couple of solo albums. She's mm. written a book. She's on radio. She's done acting. Like 
she's done so much. She just does what she wants to do. If that, <clears throat> like she just pursues yeah. whatever's in her heart. And I love that vers- versatility. Mm-hmm. She's still a mother. A mother. She's still a wife. And I love the fact that she can do it all. She does it all so gracefully. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the thing we were talking about earlier about being strong and soft at the same time. I feel like she embodies that so well. Mm. Um, so she's just, I just love her. <laughs> um, so as black women, what is something that you would wish you could tell your younger self? Don't mm. be so concerned all the time about what people think mm. about you. And when you get older, you're gonna embrace yourself and it's gonna be beautiful. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, what do I say to my younger self? I would say, don't worry about what you look like. Mm. And because you're going to grow into yourself and it's going to be beautiful. Yeah. And also, just keep going. Mm-hmm. Keep going, that's what I would say. Um, like, I would say to myself, you're okay. Like, you're generally okay. Because my younger self was, I was a happy child, but I definitely would say, you're okay, you're all right. And just keep going, you know, just keep going. And, um which is a personal one for me, I would say to my younger self, you're beautiful, you know, just how you are. Like, I've sp- I have spent a lot of time questioning that, you know. Or I would say that you grow into your height, you know, because for so long, it's like I was had this complex about being tall. You grow into it. So, yeah, you grow into your height, you're beautiful and you're OK. Yeah. I think I'd say to myself, your black is beautiful. Mm. Those features that you're criticised for now, people are going to love you for later. Yeah. In general, most of what you're going to get criticised for now is going to be great later on. Yeah. Um, and I think that's it. Just like all those people, the bullies and the people that were yeah. very critical, all those things yeah. that you wish you could change. Yeah. You don't need to change it because it's going to be the very things that are going to make your dreams come true. So that. that's what I would tell my younger yeah. self. Nice. Black is warm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what are three things as we're rounding out, what are three things that you would like to say to any black women that are watching? Be strong, be unapologetic, be unapologetic, <laughs> and stay true to you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say start talking about your feelings. Mm. Um, seek help, go to therapy if you're ready, mm-hmm. or just start speaking to your friends. Mm-hmm. Um, on an emotional level. Um, what else would I say? I would say, love your hair, <laughs> love your hair, and it will love you back. Yeah. Yes. Um, one more thing would be, keep the passion and the fire, mm. and don't reduce yourself for anybody. Yeah. Um, mm. As you said, be unapologetic. Yeah. yeah. Show up, it's okay, you know? <laughs> love yourself like not just as like a happy quote but genuinely Mm. love yourself Mm. um strong is a superpower yeah so be strong it's okay you know and lastly just in the current climate that we're in is honestly just keep trying you know like don't give up like there's so much that i could say but if it was three things is show up, you know, be present in what it is to be black, um, love yourself authentically. And yeah, that's that's me. Yeah. Uh, my three things will be your black is beautiful. Mm. All the black features, the black hair, the black features, all of that. Mm. The essence that we talked about, yeah. your black is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second thing I would say is prioritise your self-care. Whatever yeah. that looks like yeah. for you as a black woman, prioritise your self-care. Mm. Um, and the third thing will be pursue your dreams unapologetically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. those are my three things. <laughs> um, ladies, it's been such a pleasure having you on the panel i've loved talking to you today and i'm sure all of our viewers are going to absolutely love what you had to say today um let our viewers know if they want to follow you if they want to find you where can they find you start down with carla instagram carla shay with an underscore at the end yeah mine is the original weird one on instagram <laughs> yeah yeah i love that 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I am Sima247, which is S-I-M-A, 24, the number, 7, the word S-E-V-E-N. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. Thank you again thank for you. being here. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you all for watching. That's it from today's episode. Please be sure to follow us on Instagram at The Panel UK. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube RBH page. See you next time. <laughs> don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you soon.